certainly they do. They are certainly against the principle of goodwill, which is supposed to prevail the atmosphere of negotiations. This is what uh, both of us uh, have promised to each other. And we have been very clear when we met Americans uh, two days ago that uh, we cannot tolerate, tolerate such, such uh, you know, measures anymore in the future. We certainly consider them as violation of Geneva Agreement. But this sounds very bleak. I mean, we had understood that you've developed rather good relations with the Americans when it comes to these negotiations, that, that there is a, a good interaction in terms of both sides and you're treated as equals. Well, uh, there is a good interaction as much as the atmosphere of negotiation is concerned. But it doesn't mean that we have resolved all of our problems, all of our difficulties. But can you, do you think? Uh, we are optimistic, as we should be. All diplomats should be, should be always optimistic. But you've got very little time. We have little time. Time is running fast. You know, everybody you talk to in Iran, or that we talk to, they're, they're all setting a lot of store by getting this deal. They feel that wonderful things will happen once the deal comes. You, you are the chief negotiator there. They're banking on you delivering. Well, uh, yes, everybody expects uh, a lot uh, from these negotiations, from a possible deal. But at the same time, what we hear from ev almost everybody, ordinary people, officials, you know, everybody, that they all want a deal, but a good deal. A good deal. Uh, a good deal for us is, uh, is in fact a deal which uh, preserve our dignity. What happens if there's no deal? Let's even don't think about that. The alternative scenario would be terrible. This is, this is a fact. In, in such a complicated region, if we add another source of tension, because if we don't have a deal, then obviously we go back to the uh, pre-Geneva conditions. Can I ask you about the battle with uh, Islamic State? Um, so-called Islamic State. So-called Islamic State, um, IS. There are Iranian personnel, Iranian forces on the ground in Iraq? We do whatever we can for the sake of our security, for the sake of our neighborhood security, for the sake of our friend's security in Iraq, in Syria, and other places. Uh, we don't deny that we have been helpful to, to the Iraqi government. We, don't, we are not shy to say that we have helped the Syrian government to combat these terrorist groups. And we continue to do so. All forces inside and outside the region should join their efforts. Their and, and that includes resources. the Americans, for example. Well, you, you are tolerant yes. of American bombing. I think, I think that the U.S. has also a, a big responsibility. You know, they have uh, lots of the mess in the region is because of their policies in the past, because of their interference. But if you're supporting Iraq on the ground, uh, as you say everybody should be, um, doesn't it mean that you have to have a relationship with America in the air? Uh, no. Uh, what we do is just to help the Iraqi government. If Iraqi government is also enjoy uh, help and support by other countries, that is something else. And if you take the, the town of Amelie, that was taken because uh, Shia militias with good support mm -hmm. from Iranian advice and, and, and yep. weapons and the rest of it, and American bombardment. You can't have that without cooperation, otherwise you kill each other. Everybody helped. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, we appreciate the role of the Iraqi government and army to, to, to coordinate that. How far off defeating IS do you think the world is? We are not close to that.